today we're going to be talking about solving polynomial equations. And please, please, please make sure you have this written in your notes, because this is a special factoring pattern that you guys have never seen before. And it's a sum of two cubes. So if you have a perfect cube plus a perfect cube, and a perfect cube minus a perfect cube, and you just have to memorize those. And as I work through an example, I'll show you guys how I remember it. And hopefully that will also help you guys remember that. Okay, so for the first one here, you need to factor out the GCF, and that's something that you guys are forgetting to do. So I need to factor out a 5y. That leaves me with a y cubed minus a 64z cubed. So how you can think of that, carry along the y 5y with it, I have a y cubed minus 64z cubed, 64 is 4 cubed, and z is z cubed. So how I remember this, okay, first of all, carrying along the 5y, you have two things, you have two terms that you're going to have, or two pieces when you eventually multiply through. So the first one is as if these cubes weren't there. So it's just y minus 4z. Now your first term here is that first term squared, y squared. Opposite sign, sign in the middle, product of those two. And then the last term squared, so you know it's always going to be positive. Don't forget to square the 4. Okay, so now for the next one. GCF again. 3x squared. So I'm left with an 8x cubed plus a y cubed. Now again, what I do is I rewrite it. So I rewrite it as 2x cubed plus y cubed. So then we have a 3x squared. We have a, okay, so ignore the exponents. So I just have 2x plus y. And then first term squared, 4x squared. Product of your two terms. And then the last term squared. And so that's how you factor sum and differences of two cubes. Okay, this one is technically review of factoring by grouping that we did. We did this before, but just to review with you guys. Group the first two terms together. Factor out your GCF, which is an x squared. And then I'm left with an x plus a 5. Here, factor out your GCF. But you remember, you take the same sign. So I'm factoring out a negative 2 and I'm left with an x plus 5. In both of these terms, this is one term, this is another term, I have an x plus 5. So that's kind of like a GCF that I factor out. And then I'm left with x squared minus 2. Here, factor out the first two terms, or group the first two terms, last two terms. First two terms together, I have an a that I can factor out, so I'm left with an a plus 3y, I can factor out a 2, ooh, ooh, I can factor out more than that, Marnell, we can factor out a y squared, so I'm left with an a plus a 3y. Again, notice how I have a plus 3y in both terms, so what I can do there is I can factor that out, a plus 3y, and then a plus 2y squared. That's just some review of that. Solving this equation, okay, whenever you see this is a difference of two cubes. What this is is a difference of two cubes. You have to factor. You have to factor. Okay, so this is our 2x, this is our 3, 
So we factor to a 2x minus 3. So I, remember, I ignore the exponents. And then first term squared. 4x squared. Opposite sign in the middle. So then here we have a 6x and then plus 9 equals 0. Set each one of your factors equal to 0. So set 2x plus 3 equal to 0. I get negative 3 halves. If you don't factor, the only answer you're going to get is that one. But there's another one. This here, 4x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0. This cannot be factored anymore. I always have guys every year that try and factor this. And especially if you're doing the video on double time, you're going to be like, oh, I can factor that. But no, I'm saying you're telling you you can't. Okay, and I'll prove that to you right now. Let's do the quadratic formula. If I do the quadratic formula and I get some rational numbers, then I would have been able to factor that. But I promise you, you won't be able to. So opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, simplifying that. Underneath the radical, I'm not going to go through all that math. You guys could do that. Okay, under my radical, I get a negative. That means imaginary numbers. So I have to simplify that. And um, this can, underneath my radical, can be broken down into negative 1, which is going to be an i, a 36, and a 3. So the 36 is a perfect square. That can come out in front. And I still have that root 3 locked underneath my radical. And that equals 8. Now you have to cancel same number here, here, and here. So with the 6, the 6, and the 8. So the same number has to cancel. So we have a negative 3 plus or minus 3i root 3 all over 4. 2 goes into each one of those, so I canceled a 2 out. Okay, quadratics. You don't have to worry about writing this, but sometimes we're going to have a hidden quadratic, meaning that if you look at this term, if you can pull a perfect square out, notice how if I multiply, if I distribute that squared back in, I would have 4x to the 6th. 4 times 3 would be 12. So some of these look like quadratics, meaning can I put this in this form. Okay, where I have something squared minus a something plus a 9. Well, x to the third squared minus x to the third plus 9. And this is going to be important to us because eventually we're going to be solving these types of um, Equations. I don't know why it took me so long to think of that word. Okay, so, but if you're doing double time, that was only like a second. It was like five if you're not. Notice how this here and this here are the same thing. So let's think about this here. Squared minus two times that same thing minus one. Okay, so x squared squared would be turned into my x to the fourth, but I don't have this x squared that I could put here because I need this to be x to the third. So it's not, it cannot be put in as a quadratic. So again, why this is important is we want to be able to solve this equation. Okay, so again, if you see something that's x to the fourth, that's three terms, think in your head, hey, that's a hidden quadratic. That's hopefully something squared minus 29 times that same something plus 100. Let's call that something here y. Now I know we can all solve this. Two things that multiply to be 100 but are going to add to be negative 29. That's y minus 25 
and y minus 4. But what's the relationship between y and x? Okay, that's why this hidden quadratic, what's the relationship here? What's my relationship here? That middle term gives you your, your relationship, y equals x squared. So now I can substitute that in. So I have an x squared minus a 25. y is equal to x squared, so I have an x squared minus a 4. Okay, so now set each one of your factors equal to 0. And if you're going double time, you're really getting this really quick, 25. Now when you square root, don't forget your plus and minus. I know some people will, because you're going double time on the videos. Now if you're going time and a half, you get to hear this at normal speed. <laughs> Hopefully you guys find me funny. If not, I apologize, but oh well, what are you going to do? I square root both sides. Don't forget your plus and minus. Okay, another one of these, just because I wanted to give you guys one with a coefficient in front. Now, in my opinion, again, look at it like this. You have to change this to 8 times something squared plus 10 times that same something minus 12 equals 0. Something else you want to keep in mind, GCF, pull out a 2. That makes your life easier. And I know on this last test, you guys didn't believe me and you didn't factor out that GCF. Because now I can divide both sides by 2. And so now I can do this without a calculator. But you guys didn't believe me that I'm going to give you guys one where you can do a GCF. Okay, so why do the five-step method? Because it makes... Me happy, I take and I multiply, multiply, wow, that was a Chicago accent. Okay, sorry, a little nutty, I'm recording this on a Friday. So I need two things that multiply to be a negative 24, add to be a 5, 8, and 3. So now, again, remember, you've multiplied the 4 through, so you did need to divide that back out. So we have 8 divided by 4 is a 2. This doesn't simplify, so the 4 swings up. Now really, remember, what's my relationship? What's my relationship between x and y? What's my relationship between x and y? Y. Wow, that's annoying. Y equals x squared. So up here... We really have an x squared plus a 2 and a 4x squared minus 3 equals 0. Set each one of your factors equal to 0. x squared is equal to a negative 2, so x is equal to a plus or a minus a root 2, negative so x is equal to a plus or minus i root 2. Now for the other one, 4x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. 4x squared is equal to 3. x squared is equal to 3 fourths. I take the square root of both sides. So that means that squared goes away. Plus or minus root 3. I can't simplify that anymore. But I'd have a square root of 4 on the bottom, which is going to simplify to be a 2. Okay, there are your lesson questions. Please make sure that in the lesson summary is submitted on time.